In the last video, we talked about the Fibonacci sequence. Fibonacci published his sequence in this book, The Book of Squares, which he wrote in the year 1220. The introduction to this book is interesting. I'm going to read it to you. As I do, I'll put up what he is describing in our notation on the right side of the screen. Here we go. I thought about the origin of all square numbers and discovered that they arise out of the increasing sequence of odd numbers. For the unity is an odd number, and from it is made the first square, namely 1. To this unity is added 3, making the second square, namely 4. If to the sum is added the third odd number, namely 5, the third square is created, namely 9. As you can see, Fibonacci is explaining the relationship between the sequence of odd numbers and the sequence of squares. His book is all in paragraph form. He does not have access to the notation we have. The equal sign is not invented for over 300 years. Imagine the concentration it takes to do mathematics this way. I don't mind telling you that I like our notation. I like the way it looks on a page, and it makes it easier to communicate ideas and relationships. It's concise and efficient. Remember, when we communicate about this relationship, once we both have it, it transfers back and forth between us perfectly. What I just read you and what you saw on the screen is in English. Fibonacci's original book was in Latin. I imagine there was lots of translations of it before this one in the year 1987. Notice it doesn't matter if it's a good translation or not. Once we know that he is describing the relationship between the sequence of odd numbers and the sequence of squares, we understand him perfectly. Mathematics transcends language and translation. Let me read you the beginning of this again. I thought about the origin of all square numbers and discovered that they arise out of the increasing sequence of odd numbers. So he's admitting that he was thinking about the origin of all square numbers. He's writing to us in a personal way. So here's a question to think about. Do you feel a connection with Fibonacci? We understand what he is describing perfectly. He seems to be writing on a personal level, and we admire the concentration it must have taken to write his book in paragraph form without the aid of the symbols and notation that we have. Let's generalize the question a little. Does mathematics create connections or bonds between people, even people who lived hundreds of years ago? It's something to think about. In the next video, we're going to look at something called Pascal's Triangle. It's a two-dimensional array or pattern of numbers. As you can see, it's a little different from the sequence we have worked with so far, but the process of extending it is the same. Can you write the next row in this pattern? The first number should be a 1, and the number after that, 5. But what number comes next? Looking at the relationships between the numbers in a row and the numbers in the rows above and below will lead you to the relationship, and you will be able to complete the next row. This is a good opportunity to experience doing mathematics. So get a pencil and paper, write down the first five rows, and then really look around for the relationship that will allow you to complete the last row. We'll start the next video with Pascal's Triangle. See you then.